Hello, this is skillcap.com. Hey, you do know there's still a retail expansion, right? Yeah, of course. And you do know the season's ending in less than a month? What do you mean? Yeah, we haven't done a solo shuffle tier list since May. Well, at least not much has changed, right? Nope. Assassination rogues are everywhere, man. Not again. Let's wrap things up. All right, guys, we are back with the final solo shuffle tier list for Dragonflight. And you know what that means? It means the War Within content is coming very soon. And with it, brand new updates to our revolutionary add-on, which you can download right now at skillcap.com. With the click of a button, it can configure your entire UI and set up everything you need to dominate in Arena, from Gladius to weak auras, custom unit frames, and more. As a Skillcap member, you can even access premium profiles, including nameplates fully customized for every spec, allowing you to easily track debuffs and CC with absolutely zero clutter, giving you more damage and more awareness. We spent hundreds of hours making our add-on to not only save you time, but also to make sure you can hit your rating goals this season. So head over to skillcap.com using the links below to download our add-on today and learn how we guarantee you can gain 400 rating just by using our service. All right, now let's get back to the video. First up on the melee side, we have five huge winners. Assassination Rogue stocks have gradually risen over the past few months. In fact, we initially predicted this would be a spec to watch after its late expansion rework, and now we're finally confident enough to move it to the S tier. It's quite clear that Dragonflight PvP is a game of numbers, and Assassination happens to do the biggest numbers out of all three Rogue specs, while arguably being the easiest to play. With AoE Garrets, Ruptures, and with the switch over to Crimson Tempest, Assassination Rogues have no problem doing big damage. Seriously, at this point, the spec is basically just cosplaying as an Affliction Warlock except they have two knives and punch you in the kidneys every 20 seconds. Moving on, we're actually going to move Ret Paladin up half a tier. Now, we're going to pre-bubble some of the comments that are being written below. We know that Ret Paladin can be pretty lobby dependent, but we cannot stress enough that this is pretty much true for every melee, even as a rogue who gets soft countered by paladins themselves and even evokers because of bleed removals. Red is one of a few specs we'll talk about today who has benefited quite a lot from end of expansion scaling, and with one of the best offensive cooldowns tailor made for solo shuffle, it's definitely a high tier threat. Fury Warrior is our next spec to see gains in the late expansion and will be moving its way up to the high tiers. Early in the season, Fury was blessed with an overall damage buff, and right now it's actually doing pretty good on the ladder, at least in North America. In fact, the highest rated warriors in NA are actually Fury Warriors, and representation is even in their favor on the front page. For whatever reason, Fury is significantly less popular on EU, but is still looking quite competitive. Compared to ARMS, Fury is a bit squishier and of course has slightly less utility, but right now its damage output seems like enough to carry, and we feel comfortable putting both warrior specs side by side in the same tier. Next up is Unholy DK, who will be moving up the high tiers after an entire year of being mid. Earlier this season, Unholy was hit by some pretty significant damage buffs to its core spells, and currently it's doing some big damn. Now, just to tease your memory, Unholy was doing really well at the very start of Dragonflight, but then was hit by some pretty significant nerfs, which seemed to plague it the entire expansion. Currently, the spec is the second highest represented melee above elite ratings, and all things considered, we feel confident moving it back onto the A tier. Our last melee to see gains in the late expansion is Enhancement Shaman, who will be moving its way up to the mid tiers. Early in the season, Enhance was gifted a long list of damage buffs, most crucially to Frost Shock and Flame Shock. Of course, Enhancement still has its fair share of issues in PvP, including mobility, where it is still lagging behind other melee, but if played right, the spec is still highly competitive. And if you're looking to push rank 1, our number one suggestion is to make 35 Enhancement Shaman alts. With our winners sorted, let's take a quick look at the two melee specs moving down in our final update. First up is Windwalker Monk, who will be taking a graceful step down to the A plus tier. While the spec is definitely capable of some incredible damage, it is in the same boat as Ret Paladin for the time being, and is a bit too lobby dependent to truly be considered the highest tier. Outlaw Rogue is another spec we're going to be moving down from the high to mid tiers. Right now, Asa just seems so far ahead of the other Rogue specs in Solo Shuffle, having what might be the best effort to reward ratios. While Outlaw and Sub are running around the arena trying to set up kills with precise CC, Assassination can simply run around vaping, doing effortless damage with AoE bleeds. Even though Outlaw might have a few competitive comps in Structured 3v3, it's just not consistent or threatening enough to maintain a high tier status in Solo Shuffle. That brings us to our final updated tier list for Dragonflight. Despite some nerfs in the past few months, we're still keeping Demon Hunter on the S tier, where it will share a seat with the increasingly dominant Assassination Rogue. 
Even though we didn't mention it in our winner section, Sub Rogue was actually on the receiving end of some buffs a while back. Again, Sub and Outlaw share the same problem. They're not built like assassination. The effort to reward ratio just isn't there compared to the spec that can run around all game AoE bleeding while banging some poor soul with Kingsbane. Sub is and always will be a spec very sensitive to buffs and nerfs, and right now its damage just isn't punchy enough to carry its own weight in solo shuffle. Finally, the only major spec to remain unchanged despite some buffs is Frost DK. There are only a handful of people in the world who can make this spec work at the highest ratings, and it's just not designed for the solo bracket. With one of the strictest win conditions in the game, Frost DK would need a major rework to be ultra viable in solo shuffle. With melee out of the way, let's take a look at range DPS where things are definitely weird. Without spoiling too much, it's really hard to objectively say which caster is the best in solo shuffle, but at the end of the expansion, it seems like Devastation might be the number one pick. While the spec was hit with a cascade of buffs and nerfs throughout the last two seasons, it seems to have one of the most well-rounded toolkits for solo shuffle. Obviously, the main thing that separates Devastation apart from other ranged specs is its win condition, having one of the absolute best offensive cooldowns in the game, and unlike most casters, Devastation has a nasty AoE stun to go with it. The other thing that has definitely elevated Devastation stocks is its utility kit, including Cauterizing Flame, which is actually quite useful in this new Assassination Rogue meta. Surprisingly, Devastation also has really good synergy with Preservation Evokers in their ability to reset each other's hovers with Time Spiral. And in any lobby with Arresto Druid, Devastation Evokers are bound to have a good time with their AoE Purge. So with soft counters to some of the most dominant meta specs and with great comp synergy across the board, Devastation has earned its spot on the S tier. Another spec to move up the ranks is Shadow Priest, who seemingly came out of nowhere this season. Like many casters in the meta, Shadow Priest directly benefited from the Demon Hunter nerfs in mid-June. And now that there are more casters on the menu, Mind Trauma has gained even more value as Shadow Priest can siphon your haste to deal an absurd amount of damage. Just like Rhett Paladin, the stat scaling in the late expansion has seemed to benefit our Shadow friends. On top of this, Shadow Priest seems to have really good synergy with many of the Flavor of the Month specs, including Affliction Warlocks and Assassination Rogues, who seem to be everywhere on the ladder. So, in an unexpected twist of fate, Shadow Priest will be ending Dragonflight as a high-tier caster. If you had the misfortune of looking at the PvP forums in the past few months, you already know our next spec, the number one enemy of the forum posting community. Marksmanship Hunter has become a menace of the random BG crowd, and it's now even become the most popular ranged spec in Solo Shuffle. A while back, Marks Hunters got some big buffs to Rapid Fire and Aimed Shot, which were joined by nerfs to Sniper Shot. Taken together though, Marks has definitely fared well in the Season 4 meta. While it might be one of the easiest Hunter specs to counter, its damage output is still explosive enough to tackle the Dragonflight meta. The final spec to see a surge in placements is Affliction Warlock, who will be moving up to the A tier in this final update. Once again, all casters benefited from the DH nerfs, and Affliction is definitely one of them. Coming off a few damage buffs in the early season, Affliction has definitely gained traction, especially in 3v3, but even in solo shuffle, this spec can be an absolute menace and tends to do well with most specs, except of course for the occasional Red Paladin, who likes to blind off an entire row of dots for no reason. Now, not all was puppies and rainbows in the range meta, and we do have one spec going down. Balanced Druid has finally fallen from S tier, while charging its way down to the A tier in our final update. In the early stages of the season, Boomy saw a tier set buff despite being the best caster in the game at the time, but since then, Balance was hit with a few nerfs, both to utility and survivability, which taken together have made it feel less oppressive in solo shuffle. At the end of the day though, Boomkin is still one of the most flexible DPS in the bracket. It doesn't have that many bad lobbies. Just like Rep Paladin and Devastation Evoker, it is truly elevated by its power spike during its cooldowns and is a huge threat at the 2 minute mark of any round. Alright, we know this looks incredibly weird, but here's our final range tier list for Season 4. Obviously the A tier is pretty crowded, but realistically that's a good thing. Most specs are pretty competitive these days. We did consider moving both BM Hunter and Demo Warlock up to the A tier as well, but in a meta of Asa Rogues it's difficult to justify since being able to AoE bleed just funnels them more and more damage. Alright guys, let's wrap things up with the final update to the healer meta starting with one single winner. Resto Druid will be ending Dragonflight back on top as one of the best healers in Solo Shuffle. Previously, we had Resto Druid on the A plus tier, but the data doesn't lie. Resto Druid definitely deserves an S tier finish. Oddly enough, the spec did see some buffs to damage of all things, but even without these buffs, Resto was already a contender for number one healer. The only other contender is Preservation Evoker, who despite its lower representation throughout the entire ladder, is an absolute beast at high ratings and a soft counter to Assassination Rogue thanks to Cauterizing Flame. So as we wrap up Dragonflight, we have two kings that have emerged in the healer meta. Unfortunately, to wrap up the expansion, we have a few specs moving down in our final rankings. 
Last time we had Holy Priest on the A plus tier, but they will be flapping their little angel wings down to A. After its mini rework, the spec was hit with a few back-to-back -back nerfs, targeting damage, mana, and the strength of angel form. At the same time, Disc was gifted a 17th buff to atonement healing, making both specs more even when it comes to healer balance. Holy is definitely still really good, but can suffer throughput issues in some lobbies, while Preservation of Ochres can pump out 250k HPS like it's no big deal. We're also going to be moving Holy Paladin down to the B tier for our final update. While we were optimistic about the potential return of Holy Paladin after some buffs, the spec still can struggle with healing output in Solo Shuffle. Above all, though, was the loss of the Season 3 tier set, as it provided some much-needed dispel protection on Glimmer of Light. Paladins are also very prone to having very inconsistent lobbies, as some classes require way too much healing, which is why throughput-based healers like Resto Druid and Preservation of Ochre seem to rise to the top. The only other healer we are moving down in our final update is Caster Mistweaver Monk, which might actually be facing total extinction. Right now on the War Within beta, Mistweaver seems to be heading in the direction of fist weaving, with tons of new talent supporting the melee playstyle. And at the end of Dragonflight, it's quite clear that the iconic Caster Monk is lagging behind. Structurally, it just struggles with the cadence of Solo Shuffle, needing to hard cast frequently while also struggling with CC chains more than most healers. That brings us to our final update to the healer meta in Dragonflight, where Resto Druid once again managed to claw their way back to the top. We should mention that we did consider moving Fistweaver down, as it is also quite rare these days and highly lobby dependent. There are, however, a handful of players who are still doing really well in this spec, and as we just mentioned, it might actually become the permanent standard for Monk Healer. Overall, every healer in the A tier can be highly competitive, but might have enough bad lobbies to gate them from reaching the S tier. Alright guys, before we wrap up, if you want to try our brand new add-on, be sure to head over to skillcap.com. We can configure every PvP add-on in a matter of seconds to give you a highly competitive UI designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals. And when the War Within launches, you will be ready with the best guides and the best add-on settings to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Skillcap.com is the only place that guarantees you will gain rating, so what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.